a very good morning to everyone. I'll, uh, I'll begin this talk with a disclaimer, which says that 85% people are lying that they don't get nervous while speaking in public, and the rest 15% of them are, of course, lying. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of the disclaimers because I come from a film uh, industry. Of course, it got just different in the same right? Which says, no Google has been used in preparing any part of content of this talk. <laughs> any similarity to actual data, primary or secondary, is purely coincidental. <laughs> My father is a scientist and an astronomer, and since I was a kid, I've always seen him travel in different countries for his research and project. Uh, and every time he used to come back, my only motivation used to be that he used to bring me some very nice sensible toys. So he used to get me uh, remote controlled trains and uh, you know, uh, remote controlled helicopters and electronic books and whatnot. So that used to be one of the motivations for me every time he used to be back. And that also started my thoughts towards physics, electronics and creativity, in which later I graduated. One of uh, the very keen memories that I have is when from one of his trips when he was back, he got me a digital camera. This is way back in 1996, so digital cameras were a very rare thing. So he got me this camera through which I could shoot and click and directly transfer it into my laptop. I was an eight year old guy then. Uh, over the next few years, I started using this to create video clips. So I used to shoot my brother's video party and I used to create and edit it in a movie maker and that's how I started learning the basics of filmmaking. So when my friends used to play Contra on a video game, I was editing videos on a movie maker. When I was 13, I had by that time, uh, I, I was working on a, uh, developing a prototype for uh, NASA, which was a Mars rover. And when I was 15, by that time, I had created somewhere close to 50 different videos, which I shot and edited. By the time I was 21, I had watched and created good 500 to 1000 videos uh, and, and I stored all of them in my hard disk, I still own them. They are very random videos by at least, but at least understood how does this exactly work, how does making a video work. <laughs> that was the same time when my room partners, who were also freelance filmmakers, they were studying to find a platform, so they found a dearth of a platform wherein they could show their filmmaking skills. And this was the time when I dropped out of my MBA placement I, and I decided to start something called India Film Project. So what we do at India Film Project is we give them a weekend and exactly 50 hours to script, shoot, edit, and submit a film. So what started with just 600 people in 2011 grew to a community of more than five and a half like people by 2016. And what started with just 86 films in 2011 grew to a library of 4,000 films by 2016. And we went on to become Asia's largest filmmaking challenge last year. So what, what propelled this growth so when I look back, the only thing that propelled this growth I see is videos. And I'm going to talk about videos today. So as I uh, like to say, videos are the new gold. So people nowadays, lot of the, after, after the US come, a lot of people tell us that you know data is the new oil. I tell them videos are the new gold. They are the most recent form of communication which has come. So if you see, in 2005 to 2018, the internet has grown 95 times. And by 2018, 80% of all internet traffic is going to be videos. Which means that out of every 100 MBs that you're going to consume, 80 MBs are going to be spent on a video. So videos are going to be the next big thing. So I was talking about this topic to my wife uh, yesterday, and she's a radio jockey, so she has a very different perspective to things. So she tells me uh, in a very simple manner, she says, Ritam, do you realize for the first thousands of years, humans used your mouth and ears to communicate? In the last few thousand years, they have been using their hands to communicate. And this is the era wherein we are going to use our eyes to communicate. So this is the era of visual communication. This is where the videos are going to make the big change. So and she was, so I asked her, are videos the next big thing? So she tells me, because she, she is completely tuned to her unlimited bandwidth internet. She tells me, yes, videos are the next big thing. And I can't say a no to this because I am in the business of videos. <laughs> so how many of you here have created a video in last 24 hours, maybe on Facebook, Snapchat, camera, Instagram. Yes, quite almost every answer. In fact, I see Mr. Desai also raising his hand. Yes. About the videos. So videos are everywhere. They are on your laptop. 
they are on your television, they are on your desktop, they are on your mobile screen, probably eating lots of your memory in the mobile as well, which you forget to delete a lot of times. They are in the flight you travel, they are in the bus that you are traveling, they are in the CCTV that watches you continuously. They are everywhere. And they are in different formats. They are, in, in, uh, they are an advertisement, they are a brand film, they are a pre-wedding shoot, they are just wines that you create, they are random memories that you create on a mobile. And they are present everywhere. So one of my friends tells me that you know ordinary people have big TV sets, but extraordinary people have big video libraries. How many of you have got a hard disk full of videos here? So there are a lot of extraordinary people who are sitting in front of me today. <laughs> So why? Why did videos grow so substantially in, in last few decades and why are they next, the next big thing according to me? So what do people buy? People don't buy products and services. People buy emotions, stories and magic. Videos are one of the best ways of communication through which you can channelize emotions and stories. I'll give you an example to make this. So when I was a kid, Every Raksha Vandan used to be about brothers giving clothes and showpieces and accessories to sisters when we were kids, right? In the last couple of years, all I've been seeing is people giving them a Cadbury celebration and yeah. <laughs> Everyone does. Yeah. Yes? So that is the, the, the kind of emotion that the, that the videos, the advertisements by them have tried to relate with an emotion. So the emotion you had of the festival has been correlated very well with the thought of a chocolate box. Excellent. This, uh, uh, another example that would, I would uh, want to give you is, uh, there was a film called Jungle Book which released last year in India. It was one of the highest grossing Hollywood films of all time. What made it one of the highest grossing Hollywood films of all time? <laughs> Nostalgia. Videos create emotions and there is no better medium apart from face to face. There is no better medium like videos which, which helps you create transform emotions from one place to another. Yes. So people love to hear stories and they buy emotions. So one of the interesting factors of course getting there, is that 80% people, they remember a video even 3 days, uh, even 30 days after watching it. So videos are engaging. They have a very higher engagement and the moment you touch the emotion, the engagement increases. So one of the Forrester research says that a single minute of video is worth 1.8 million words in a text which is equal to 3,600 pages, right? It's worth, it's not exactly equal to, it's worth 1.8 million words, which is huge. Because videos are a mixture of audio and visuals, they always have a higher recall over your brain. And because they have a higher recall, there are chances that they have a higher virality. That's why probably you see so many videos being shared every day on your social media. So if I have to correlate this, this slide does this, which tells you that the videos are 60,000 times faster to process by your brain than a text. You understand 60,000 times faster than, your, than a text. That's because, probably because 40% of your brain nerves, they end in your retina. Right? So, that is also one of the reasons when you tell, when you ask a person, to read versus to watch something, they, a majority of people will love to watch something, right? So uh, after I knew this fact a couple of years back, I called up my mom and I told her, you know, now now this is the scientific reason why I always prefer to watch cartoons or study. This is one of the reasons for this. So videos are easier to create. As I said, a lot of people who, who create videos on a day or a weekly basis, right? Knowingly or unknowingly, we have been creating a lot of video data. So I'll just share an example about, uh, 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 this is from the last week. Uh, I got a call from my mom. I got a notification from Facebook, which said that your mom is alive. And this was at 11 p.m. in the night. I was terrified. I said, why again she is alive? And I clicked on it and she was broadcasting a musical concert. Now she happens to be a very new smartphone user. So it's a, uh, it's a surprise when I see that she is going live. How many of your mothers are also going live? <laughs> Family members? Embarrass you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this was almost a dozen times that she went live in the last 30 days. And I was thinking why I, I, I woke up my wife. I was like, you know, she doesn't have, she, she goes live at 11.30 p.m. in the night. And then I realized that going live is actually easier, or creating a video is actually easier than a 140 character tweet. Yeah. 
that's what it is becoming. It's becoming even easier to create videos in the in the in the generation that we are living right now. So I can imagine my 55 year old mom creating 12, 15 videos every month, going live and sharing her stories through a video rather than calling me and telling me what exactly is happening there. <laughs> so one of my friends tells me that videos have reached their peak. There is no more development which is going to happen. Every, every kind of video is already there on the internet. But I was going to one of the Cisco research paper which said that by 2020, there will be 7 trillion videos which will be online. If you divide it by the number of people who are living alive on the planet by that time, that comes to whooping 1,000 videos per person which would be created, which is a huge number. This is, we are talking about petabytes of data which is going to be created just because of videos. The best part about creating a video is that you don't require an equipment and you don't need to learn them. When, you're, when, when you write to communicate, you need to learn how to write and how to read. However, in videos, what happens in last, what has happened in last one decade is that you don't need to remember how, or you don't need to learn or go through a formal process or training to exactly know how do you create a video or how do you watch a video. That makes this medium one of the most rich mediums to communicate. So videos are universal in appeal. And how I would share this is because at India Film Project, we have thousands of videos that we have created. And apart from India, a large chunk of our audience comes from US, UK, Europe, Australia, a lot of places from where people watch our videos. And these videos are not all, all, not all of them are in English. A good chunk of our videos are in uh, Hindi or non -regional, or other regional languages. So there is a person from Turkey who is one of our veterans and he writes to us every time. Every time he likes our videos, he writes us that how he loved those videos. And I and my team wonder what on the earth is a man sitting in Turkey and understanding a Tamil video without a caption, <laughs> right? And the beauty of this medium is that you don't need to know a language to understand it. How many of you have watched a film without its subtitle and understanding the language? Probably. I've watched a French film without even knowing what they were speaking about, but, but I could still understand the film. I, I don't know if you've heard about Emily. Right? So there are a lot of things that I've, uh, lot of time. In fact, that is one of the reasons that I watch a Russian video on YouTube to learn how do I re repair my Chinese remote control. <laughs> right? So videos don't need a language and that's the beauty of this communication. That they don't, they have a universal appeal and they transcend the border of languages. So what do people love? As, as a human, we are hardwired to love stories. We are storytellers and we love stories. We don't love facts. We love stories and we love visuals, right? And videos do that in a proper manner, in the best manner. Of course, images also do that. So if I go back today from uh, from here to my home, I'll always remember that the stage has two Mima Rose advertisements put on both the sides. <laughs> so remember this. I don't remember single <laughs> so I will not remember a quote which was written on the wall, but I'll definitely remember this. And multiply it by 24 frames per second, we are hardwired to storytelling and stories can transcend emotion. So I'll tell you how does that happen. Videos have a larger playground. So you have characters that you can change, your expressions, your background, your framing, your music, lot of things. And each of them helps you build, uh, build trusted, trust and relatability. Right? So when you watch a video and you feel you trust or you are able to relate, your brain releases a hormone called oxytocin. What oxytocin does is it enhances your sense of empathy and it opens the door for the emotions to travel from a screen to your brain. What else does a storyteller need? He needs this emotions to travel. And, and when, when a person is not sitting in front of you face to face, this is the best way when a, a emotion is recorded, shown and travels to your, uh, to your brain. In fact, that is also one of the reasons that lot of people, you find a lot of people crying in the movie hall. Right? Have you seen someone crying in the movie hall? How many times have you cried in the movie hall? All of them. No one is going to raise their hand. <laughs> so that is one of the reasons. Because your brain releases oxytocin and oxytocin opens the passage to, to, to your emotions. So what do we do with videos? So at India Film Project, uh, when we started this uh, competition, it was purely for uh, a, a platform for filmmakers. Two years later, we realized that we were actually not leading people to make films. We were leading people to tell a story using the most rich form of communication. 
So earlier it was compulsory for people to travel down to Ahmedabad and shoot a film. This is when we, we thought we need to transcend the borders and we need to break them and we need to ask people from all across the globe to participate. So we went online and we told people, okay, so now you can make a film in 50 hours from whichever city or country you are and you can submit it and tell your story. This, that was the year, the only year wherein we had a 300% growth in our participation, which was huge. Why did this happen? Because people started loving videos. People could wanted to tell a story and they were looking for something wherein they could put their stories forward. So I personally watch every film that is made by uh, our community members at India Film Project. And I, there are some videos which feature Havra Bridge, there are some videos which feature Jammu Valley, some videos which feature France, there are videos which have different backgrounds, different people. Some videos which show the harsh realities of life, some of them which show fantasy, and there are different kind of videos that we receive. Over the last six years, we have created 35,000 minutes of content, which is user-generated user content. In, the, in, in this sole year, we are targeting to create equally good 35,000 minutes of content, which is basically growing our library by 100% this year. How do we assume and how do we know that this is going to happen? Is because we understood that people and audiences love videos. They love watching. And this is the rate at which the, the entire industry, the viewing, the consumption is growing. So this is one of the mandatory graphs that I was going through every talk, TED talk and people were making fun, so I thought, let's, let's put it there. So this <laughs> graph basically talks about the depth, effectiveness of a medium versus different mediums that are possible. So face to face is of course irreplaceable medium. It's always good to meet your girlfriend. If you are not able to meet her, it's always good to do a video call or snap her and then phone and then texting. So texting is fourth, then email and then social media. However, if I realized that the, the, the the new generation that we live in exactly uses in the opposite order. <laughs> so the post on internet, then the email, then the text, then the phone, then the videos and So the next few decades belong to videos and what makes me say that this is the, the, the entire communication is going to shift to 24 frames per second in, in the next coming years. The brands and products have already realized it. Your WhatsApp, your Instagram, your Facebook already know that. They are already coming to videos. Your LinkedIn is also joining the video wagon soon. What next in videos? People tell that the videos have already reached their peak, but no. 360 is going to the new immersive videos. They are growing. There is something called interactive videos. Heard about it? You can select what story you want to see after every scene. Interactive videos are growing. Virtual reality is growing. Virtual reality is is, is going to the big thing, if you have heard the FH conference that Mark Zuckerberg recently spoke about. So this is what they have been betting big on. Computers are going to become the biggest creators of videos. And apparently they are also going to become the biggest consumers of videos. How? Heard about a driverless car? Yes. It uses cameras and videos to analyze. So computer starts consuming the content. In fact, TED Talk is one of the examples of how videos are changing the world. So I just want to end, end it saying that you know videos are now, videos are the next decade, and videos are the future. So when are you shooting your next one? Thank you.